Like Sawa. <laughs> That's very beautiful. Looks like a bit like Pella. Flowers is simple and not high tech. Um, I feel very um, uh, interested because I I can't see many uh, city or build building here. Um, only have um, the very uh, simple and the people is very uh, nice and friendly. Um, so the first impression is quite good. For me, Laos is a very peaceful village and it's a very nice scenery. And the weather is very cold, it just feels like staying in Cameron Island. And the uh, people around here is very friendly. And, uh, and the food is very interesting for me too. Although it's a little bit similar to our local food, but most of them, their taste is quite kind of heavy. They like to put there are sauces inside and then it tastes kind of funny for me but it's still a very interesting experience for me It's because it's cool, colder than Wentian and like the weather here and the places is lots of like guest house which is vintage style and all with, made with wood and that's <coughs> yeah, I really like this place and we can stay here for like seven days, that's cool. You can see more of the locals on how they live and what they buy every day. They don't really have shopping centers. We try to find shopping centers, but I think they have shopping centers. So we actually, uh, one day in Lakhok, one day in Vientian, we actually explored the temples. And we actually went to the night market to see what, what the locals actually buy in the night markets. And it's actually quite similar to KL. Uh. So when you're walking past by the street, you feel this peace and then you feel it's um, very, very safe uh, along during the, 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 the country. It's actually quite interesting. It's a village outside of the resort of Rong Prabang. So you can actually see that it's quite similar to the rural kampongs of Malaysia. It's closer to Vientiane actually, but poorer. There are different villages and each village would specialize in one craftsmanship. So at the bamboo village, it's only one road, it's actually one road down and then all the houses are women weaving baskets out of bamboo. The village we went to is like, I think it's amazing because the whole village is doing the same stuff like they, all of them are doing the bamboo weaving, like every woman in the village is doing the same things. And most of the women there are actually quite old age. They are not young, but they they are quite happy with their life. I see all like every every houses women are doing the same things, and their village is yeah the bamboo is planting behind the village, so every one of them are doing the bamboo waving. And we do ask the Lao student about uh, this culture of this village, they say that uh, the men have to go out to work or go out to get the bamboo and the women will stay at home and do the bamboo waving daily. When you reach the village and then you talk to people, you realize about, you learn more about what fair trade really means. Uh, as we know, as we know from the villagers that is that um, when they sell it to the middleman, it's around 10,000 gig for a small basket. The middleman might sell it double to triple price in the market. And once, you, once you're at their village and you see how much effort they put into the weaving the basket, you realize that there is a sense of <coughs> what's it called? Monopolization, I guess. Where 
they actually they are not paid enough for what they are doing and probably because of the education level there's a there's still a lot of things that can be improved uh. yeah Um, today I go to uh, the textile village uh, for making the textile. Well, I feel very excited because I can see all the progress on uh, their making and weaving the textile. Very, very fabulous. So I, we can see how they are weaving and how they are to do the. Uh, Spring, spring from the cotton, uh, from the silk, silk to uh, uh, a string, and then they are made the curve. Very, very nice. The textile making actually is like a very complicated process, but very, but it's very interesting. They, you, sh you can. Because for most of us, when we want to buy a fabric, we just get it from the market and then without thinking about the process behind it. And then when you go through it with that process, you can understand their work and then appreciate their work more. Uh, for most of the part, it's a first hand experience for me. And it's very interesting too. Uh, we, also, uh, we also have tried to play with the how to do the building and then we also have to uh, see the shop outside there you can see many another type of the curve it's very very beautiful uh, and then just only the it's only the first part before getting getting gathering the material and then in the and then when you come to the fabric making like you have to design the patterns you have to put into the mesh the machine that build the fabric so it's really Complicated and then it's very uh, challenging works too. And then you, not to mention, they have to spend a lot uh, of weeks to finishing up finishing a fabric. So you can see that actually, you can see that yeah, it's not an easy work. <laughs> very good kind of the time. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> So today we will visit the uh, village that they came the papers. Uh, we have looked about the how to make the paper and they also um, describe the process how to make the paper. The interesting part for for the paper making is uh, the use the, the skin of sar tree to make the paper but they got a problem is we find out the problem is for this paper making is after that they peel up the skin uh, from the tree but they doesn't use the wood of the sa tree after you take it off yes. this tree is dying uh, dying uh, yes so yeah, what's yes. happened to this tree go to the ash uh, it's so soft so soft the paper yeah. furniture oh can I make the furniture yeah. oh because the base on the wood quality is soft yeah. so just leave it in yeah. the forest Oh. I guess that they have a study so, so, further so, 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 can be used. We have a walk to the mm, to the uh, around the river. <laughs> I, maybe to search from for the material. Basically all the villagers is doing the same patterns in the paper making. So we find out that they just keep just copying the same patterns that and no chance and no times and no um, no the passion to find uh, to create new design so um, we find out that this is the problem that the religious are facing but this is have a good and have the have the good side for this is they maintain the culture and then you can see the pure the raw uh, traditional way Laos people is doing this this way but um, the, the bad side is we can't they can't get improvement they can get to uh, product uh, produce a new a good quality or the, or the diff, 
different different kinds of products to selling to attract the tourists to buy it. I learned I learned some special waving because I never tried that. Although it hurts our hand, but it brings us to like when we do maybe when I do find artwork in the future I will do like in the sense of waving things like that. Mm. I learned how to weave a bamboo basket. I actually did a bamboo basket. I think it is really nice. I think everyone should learn how to weave to understand. Well, we learn already, and we this today we our, in our group we did discuss uh, discuss about the idea of our product. When we discuss about the idea, other than like technique we learn for weaving, I learn a lot of like marketing, like QR code that like. Those we I didn't learn in, like really learn in fine art, like all those <laughs> G design for the packaging. Actually, uh, do hands on on the bamboo. You realize that it's actually not that easy to do, and then uh, ten thousand kip is not enough for them because when you want to before you weaving the bamboo is not the only thing that they do. Weaving the bamboo is actually the easy part. You actually have to cut the you have to start from the bamboo itself, you need to cut down the bamboo tree. The tree. You need to cut down the bamboo, then you need to bake the bamboo, you need to split the bamboo, then you need to make it consistent, you need to peel the bamboo, and then you need to choose the bamboo, then you can start doing the bamboo. <laughs> so yes, bamboo weaving. Shop of the how to weaving the te textile. Um, uh, although it's like a very simple pattern of the textile, but it's really really uh, fun. And then we also uh, saw many um, the effort the of the scrub men there do it. So actually the textile is a uh, very amazing. The textile actually is a skill that very takes a lot of patience and then you not only that you it only that it's also involved with creativity too. And then in the process of making the textile you actually have to maintain with your heritage. Also but <coughs> but actually this this kind of their pattern actually they can make some uh, adjustment or make some evolve they can evolve from time to time actually. But it is but the technique is will pass but the technique is still maintaining is passed up from time to time, you know. It's, so it's, for me it's a waste that uh, nowadays that there's it doesn't have any doesn't have too much people appreciate the art of the textile because it, because it doesn't know about the, the how hard it is exactly to make a make a frame like that. And then so for this for this trip, actually we learn a lot of day and then it's also making us much more appreciate about their skills, their arts, their heritage. Uh, I learned to I learned how to make the pepper, uh, the method to do the pepper. I think I will try to apply my uh, my idea or material from Malaysia to do paper uh, when I went to Malaysia. Yeah, I learned much in the village. Uh, I, I learned about the uh, people, the villagers, um, making the river in the traditional way. Um, but I found some problem is um, the villagers just, co just keep copying on the same patterns and doesn't have any modified or any development the patterns of the okay? So, um, so it makes that some of the 
product is not attractive for the tourism for me. So um, for me, I think that um, maybe they have they, they want to spend some time um, to spend more time on the new design based on paper. People here using paper in a very simple way to do what the material they get uh, just from not not so not uh, is uh, very near from their home and they do it very casual like <coughs> the thing what they usually <coughs> do uh, in daily life I I think it's very good it's a very relaxed way maybe I will learn this attitude uh, when I do in my art. Uh, we also get getting, getting a fine find out some uh, environment issue uh, during the village because the village is nearby the Mango River. So um, when we go into the Mango River and then try to collect the flora, the flora, the leaves, some elements that making decoration on the paper, and then we find out that uh, uh, beside the flower and leaves, then there got many. Uh, Many uh, rubbish, many trash uh, belongs to the river. So um, we found that maybe that's one is an issue about the, for the for the villagers and the river. So um, yeah, we find out that maybe you can have you can find some way to um, get improve, uh, get improving, uh, and get um, some way to solve this problem. today the place I visit today is I go to a very interesting place this is a dream place in my dream in my room <laughs> we go to the the other side of the river um, and visit the village there uh, I think it's like a village little town and we go there by a boat they need to spend how much? Uh, 50,000? 5,000. Five, sorry, 5,000. And then <coughs> we go, we arrive there uh, um, about five or five, five minutes. Cross above the river, and you go to the opposite side uh, on Rang Pabang. And then <coughs> um, it's cold because um, the weather on today, I think, is still in 16 to 17 Celsius and then we, we take a ship um, cross the cross the river so um, the wind is blowing so it's quite cold to be Besides that after after we Side, opposite side of the Rambala and then you can see a different world compared to yeah the the, the tourist place at, at, at here because um, opposite the river is the area that the local people stay the living place of the local peoples yeah the, the place is very old or something is like a way um, is a bit like a Malay kampong. The floor is like a, a have many soil, and then the house of it is a very very old, and the people also very simple. All the buildings and all the people and all the structure of the streets is old school and and not high tech and then and not. Not good, look good, yeah. <coughs> Something all is simple, even old, and then um, have no good design. And yeah, um, it shows that the economics or the income levels of the local people, I think, is not higher than I have expected. Yeah, 
I felt that I, I really miss Malaysia. <laughs> and then we go, we arrive a place like they got a, a long straight straight and then then they say we need to pay five thousand more than to going up to see I thought it's like uh, have a temple or something else but when I go um I'm very <laughs> very hard to going going up there there's only nothing to see. But actually it's a high a high a high place so uh, we can see uh the scenery of um in the opposite of the Rampabang. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh today was awesome. We went to Guangxi waterfall and then we did our homework. <laughs> Okay, to the waterfall, then we took a lot of pictures and uh, before that we also grabbed some food to go in there and have lunch there. Oh, you can see the food. You can see the food. You can see the food. <laughs> we went to the waterfall, so there was a mini mini bear conservation site inside. So we actually saw bears. We climb up to the high hills and we walk through the waterfall places. And I, yeah, I fall into the water. We didn't prepare for it, and it was really cold. At the top of the waterfall, you had to cross the river, so we had to take off our shoe. In during winter in Laos, on top of a mountain, and the floor was really cold, like it, it was it was like ice, and it was painful to the leg. The water was more comfortable to step in than the. Sand, land, soil, I don't know. But it was really fun. Really worth really worth it. I learned a lot from like GD student for for that design student because I'm I not really learn to do things for others. So in this program I learned a lot about marketing stuff and how to branding your uh, your item, your product. So it's actually one of the few chances that you can actually work together with uh, students from different courses of the school, even. It has been really fun and quite crazy. I'm quite crazy. Everyone's been quite crazy. We learn a lot from each other. Hopefully, when we get back to school, we can keep in contact. After this, I feel my practice on artists. Not enough. Um, as my course is illustration, I, normally I focus on digital painting and also um, traditional painting. Um, but through this time, I have met some uh, uh, another student from other course like product design, industry design, and uh, communication design and some that has inspired me a lot and I want to try something new like something about graphic design something more to design but not about the painting yeah yeah it's fun because um, each student each from different kind of gods they are uh, culture for all their life building or their habits from the country so their, their, their thinking or their, their, their actual way is different so um, yeah I have learned much from them besides that um, yeah I'm very happy because I have met some new friends during this program so yeah it's nice <laughs> For another country, people maybe are to do a project. 
So this is very, very interesting. And also a challenge for me. That when you do a do thing, do um doing something or project is done, then you can realize that no, actually all people they are different. They are, they, are, they have their own culture and their own mind and um, according to their uh, country or culture, they have different mind, mind and idea or maybe their concept. I have a lot of feelings, so and I like this place a lot. And Bolo will be back to Malaysia, and I hope that this program will be grow bigger for the next year and for the next year, when the next year keep uh, participants. So I hope that I hope that all the best for the best of my teammates and all the best for this labor program and I hope that we can all grow together toward a better future. The program, the whole neighbor program purpose is to like bring about bringing all the youngest from the from Asia, different country from Asia to make a work or create an idea. But for us, like, we're thinking, yeah, the idea is important for this whole project. But we're also thinking, like, this is a good chance for us to get together. So we just, yeah, we go there and we discuss about our ideation also. But yeah, we enjoy the moment together.